David Blunkett. Madam Deputy Speaker, um, it has been a, a very interesting and, and, for me, instructive uh, four and a half hours, and there has been some excellent contributions, including from some members on the opposite side, not, I have to say, the member who has just spoken from Leicestershire North West. Could I just say to the members for, for uh, Bexley and Crayford and for Kingswood that we, we really do not need to reinvent history unless we are going to learn from it first. And, as the Secretary of State, who was responsible for employment for four years and then briefly for work and pensions, there are some real lessons to be learnt from the efforts that we made to change the system. And unless they are learnt from, then we will reinvent the wheel all over again and there will be disappointment for those who really do believe that this bill is the bee's knees. Unfortunately, uh, it isn't. In 1998, when we set about reducing unemployment to under a million, claimant count to under a million for the first time in a quarter of a century, and uh, the Labour Force survey figures below one and a half million for the first time in 30 years. We did so not just because we were expanding the economy and there was growth, but because we were actually helping people from welfare into work. And work is the best form of welfare yeah. and making work pay is the right thing to do yeah. and promoting independence right. is sensible and logical and encouraging people to be uh, self-reliant including thrift and savings really does make a difference and honesty in the benefit system is something we should all aim at the only problem madam deputy speaker is that this bill doesn't achieve those things and if it did i'd be wholeheartedly in favour of it. And I do ask the uh, ministers responsible just to take another look at the Centre for Social Justice report and then compare it with what is on offer this afternoon uh, in this bill. I am going to use the example of disability living allowance purely because I know more about issues relating to sight loss than I do most other things to do with disability and welfare, despite the ministerial experience. But I want to say that both on the universal credit and on DLA, we are in danger of moving in the opposite direction to the one stated by government to be their policy. The personal independent payment uh, removes automatic entitlement to certain defined groups with specific challenges, including blind people. I don't speak about these issues very often in the House, but if you remove effectively the care component, you also remove the mobility component as well, which is just about to be expanded uh, in uh, April, as agreed by both sides of this House and hard fought for by those responsible over a very considerable period of time. And to do that, we'll have exactly the perverse and opposite effect to that intended. Instead of the can do and making it possible for people to get out of a position of dependence, they will actually be trapped in it. The perversity can be best demonstrated on page 16 of the Disability Allowance Reform document put out in January, where it uses examples of what this system will actually mean. It talks about testing whether someone is capable of planning and taking a journey, whether someone understands and communicates. But the whole purpose of disability living allowance was to ensure by receiving it you enabled people to do those things, not that they were trapped in it and had those things done for them. In other words, I, where we have the work capability allowance, which is about what you can do, the new test for disability living allowance or the new title for it will actually be what you can't do. That leads to dishonesty That's where right. people present what they can't do in their worst circumstances, not their best. Uh, on the, uh, the, the new universal credit, uh, we encourage people to save and then we penalise them when they do so. And we get into a situation where every step that's taken that actually has a positive outcome from the measures in this bill is then trumped by a particular practice, an administrative uh, complexity, which actually makes it worse. And we're all in favour of simplicity, but the problem with uh, simplicity is that it doesn't usually lead to equity. And that's why we've ended up with a complex system 
that members have described this afternoon. If we could have had a simpler system, quickly and easily would have had it. We laid out principles in September 2005, which I still believe stand the test of time. But unless the government listen and review and understand what's happened in the past, we'll go through the same problems all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Newton.